Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined today by Ben Stewart who just preached a sermon called This is Love. Ben, thank you so much for being here with us sure. today. Thanks, man. So let's jump in. The most important question first. How did your turkey turn out? Turned out great. It's good. Uh, mildly overdid one of them. Okay. But had two. It turned out great. Okay. And uh, the neighbor's turkey, I think, turned out the best of them all. Nice. And made a friend. So it good. was actually pretty cool, man. So two for three on the turkeys. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the first one wasn't a total loss, sure. but, you know, Lord willing, we'll never do that again. <laughs> uh, so uh, to a more serious kind of question, um, we talked a lot, you talked a lot in the sermon about um, how God is love and he is our source of love and, yep. and he is the reason why we are able to love. Mm -hmm. um, so someone had a question about, um, is it possible for us to love God, but not to, to trust him? Uh, maybe it's like still have doubts um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, those things are very linked. Sure. You know, if you think about coming into a relationship with God is based on faith right. that Jesus' death truly accomplished something. Sure. So at that level, trust, faith it is the foundation piece of that love relationship. So in that level, it has to be there. That's right. And so uh, that's critical. So okay. yes, in that sense, you have to trust Him. But... Let's say you've put your faith in Christ, you've been born again, you're a child of God by the grace of God through Jesus. Can you struggle to trust God with, will he take care of me? Will he be there for me in the future? Will he? Yes, and if you read through the Bible, people that know God, love God, wrestle with trusting God all the time. Yeah. And what's beautiful about God is he's patient with us and works with us. So read right. the life of Abraham. Did he have faith in God? Yes, it's very clear that he did in Genesis 12 and Genesis 15 states it directly. Right. But do you see him doubt God at critical moments through the rest of his journey? Sure. Yes. And you see it with every person. Right. Trust grows over time. Right. As you, well, I would say the feeling of trust grows right. as you take steps of trust. Right. Okay, God told me to do this, live this kind of life, and then he'll be there for me. I'm going to do this, but a little like, ah. Right. Yeah. And then when I see God come through, I trust him more the next time. Sure. So is it okay to have shaky trust? Yeah. Right. At that level, yeah, it's okay. Absolutely. But, uh, but it should grow over time. Right. Well, and I think a lot of people confuse, uh, like you can trust someone and still have doubts about yeah. things. The two go hand in hand. And Absolutely. as you mentioned, faith is is trust and it's obedience. That's kind of the foundation of faith. And But you see throughout scripture, people trusting God, but still doubting. You, you see them openly yeah. questioning, you know, God, where are you? What's happening? But nevertheless, yeah. I'll trust in your steadfast love. And they grow in their faith. Absolutely. Yeah, totally, man. Yeah. You got it. Uh, and so you also mentioned in your sermon, um, you talked about, you gave the example of addiction. You talked about how the yeah. number one leading cause of addiction is a feeling of lack of love, mm -hmm. that they are not wanted, not loved. Yeah. Um, are there any other causes? Um, we know there are the other causes, but what are some other of the big causes that lead to yeah. addiction? Well, and, and that's where, you know, I probably blew past that too fast because mm -hmm. addiction is a complicated issue. Sure. And I certainly don't want to minimize right. addiction at all um, and minimize the complexities of it sure. either, yeah. you know? So, um, but is there a genetic disposition towards addiction uh, to certain things? I would say uh, yes, sure. you know, yeah. and um, so that would lead some people to become addicted to certain things that would not lead others. Some people right. can have a drink socially here and there and be fine. Other people find themselves looking forward to it in unhealthy ways sure. and, and abusing it. Yeah. And so are there genetic predispositions to addiction? Yes, there are. Yeah. but. Carnes will point out that is interesting is, you know, when, let's say someone is addicted to alcohol and they want to be sober, mm -hmm. there is now a physiological need for that, that you've got to address first. The first order issue is let's get the alcohol out of your system right. and let's get it away from you that you're not continuing to go back to it. So let's get you sober. But then the deeper work is what happened 
that led you to begin to abuse sure. alcohol yeah. or or different you know avenues online or different substances or whatever um, usually there's some degree of pain under that yeah, and absolutely. often it can be hard to access that people are like no I do it to manage stress and you go well where is that stress coming from stress is a byproduct of of something or sure. in your life right. and there's a coping strategy that you picked up because there was something difficult to deal with right. and so I don't know that I could sit here and say underneath every single addiction is a love issue but Carnes will feel comfortable saying that I believe I don't think I'm misquoting him yeah. and um, and I do think there's something to that of having to ask that deep question of what what pain led to going to this uh, substance and and again I want to be clear I'm not saying this in like a, a clinical and and dismissive way sure. as somebody who's dealt with been around lived through lived with addictions of various kinds I say it with a compassion of going this isn't an easy issue sure. and I certainly don't want to suggest the sermon is we'll just feel loved by God and you'll quit being addicted or whatever yeah. that's not that's not at all what happens it, it becomes a journey you go through with help and supportive community, mm. but the more you begin to lean into supportive community, the less you lean on certain substances, and, and you can find a level of healing and hope that maybe you don't think is possible even now. So uh, I would encourage you, if you're struggling with a level of addiction, don't struggle in silence. Yeah. Find some people you trust, um, and maybe you look around your social sphere and go, I don't know anyone in my social sphere, so you go to a pastor or a counselor yeah. and begin to talk about this is what I'm doing and help let them help you unearth some of the deeper issues because there is a path of freedom out and that path of freedom out is always loving community That's right. and and if you look at AA it always starts with acknowledging I need God right. and um, so I would say the love of God and the love of the people of God can get you out of some things that maybe now you don't see a way out of so have hope uh, because God's love is that powerful and it doesn't mean it it's not a flip of a switch, sure. but it's yeah. there for you uh, through his community if, if, you'll, if you'll come to him, I promise. Absolutely. Thank you. That's so important. Yeah. Um, and thank That's you, Ben, question. so much uh, for being here with us this week. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.